What was it like to be on the ground floor as Sesame Street began? It was the most amazing, magical experience. Who came up with the idea for Sesame Street? Well, that was Joan Gans Cooney. She was in a supermarket in Atlanta, Georgia, and she heard a little black guy about three singing the Pepsi commercial over and over and over, and she said, the light bulb went on. That's what he learned. He knew the words, he knew the lyrics perfectly. And she always wanted to create children's television for education. And she went back and met with Lloyd Morissette, who was with Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And there was this famous dinner. They had Beef Wellington. And she pitched the idea. How did you come up with the engaging style? Based on the idea that a lot of repetition and catchy tunes, characters that appeal to children, um, back to really the most creative force, John Stone, the producer. Mm -hmm. Once you trace back, you ask a question, it sort of all traces back to him. He found Jim Henson, he wrote the pilot. Um, the first, they couldn't name the show, it was called the Itty Bitty Nitty Gritty Kitty Show. <laughs> <laughs> but they had two days to actually come up with a title yeah. and a name, and uh, someone said Sesame Street. Really? Or Just Open Sesame, oh. Open Learning, Open the Doors to Learning. And why puppets? Well, puppets can be so appealing to kids. Uh, Big Bird was a puppet, Muppet. They're not puppets, they're Muppets. Okay. Um, that was most like a child. That was his design. He, he was the one to be most childlike. And then all the others are their own characters. Like Bert and Ernie, they have their own stories. They have long character profiles. You know, Bert has a rubber ducky. Ernie has his paperclip collection. So he's like very staid and boring, and Ernie is dum de dum you know. So they play off each other very well. So all the characters, were created by Jim Henson, the Muppets, and then he just doodled and came up with the faces, and then his shop built the actual puppets. Hmm. How do you think they came up with the specific characters? Well, they're just geniuses, Jim Henson, Frank Oz. They would just have the look based on Jim's doodles, mm -hmm. and then they would expand like anyone that writes a novel or creates a character for a film, they would do in-depth character profiles for each character. Hmm. And they've stayed true to that. Where, was the environment sort of, people were just always creative, they were making things up all the time? All the time. Yeah. There were several reasons I think that it was so creative. One is it was based on research for a whole year. That there was research about what children watched they would sit in front of television, the kids, and watch the children watching TV, mm. and what part of the screen they watched, when they disengaged. So they're tracking so their they, eye movements? Yes. On the okay. So one piece of the creativity was a strict Bible of curriculum. Mm -hmm. It was like a thick notebook. And everything on the show had to adhere to that. But, that being said, they had free reign to just say and do anything, and that's why so much of is on a, a double level. That adults loved it and kids loved it as well because mm -hmm. no one was really sitting around wondering, oh, I wonder if they're going to like this. Oh, I wonder, you know, if this will be okay. They just did what they thought was funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was. I really loved it. I, I have such fond memories of it growing up. Um, when you first saw the show, what did you think? I was just enchanted. I loved it uh, from the opening note. Um, Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? Which Joe Raposo wrote. And I thought it was very busy and very noisy. So the film, the first film I made was called Flying. And it was 
very silent and lyrical was a bald eagle flying and then landing. And you made little films that would go with the curriculum that would. Oh yes, okay. that was on staff as a, as yeah. part of a <coughs> film team, and that was my role. Oh, I'm remembering these now. These little films that would come in. Yes, my first reaction was when I s was watching that show, but I was just ironing in my apartment with my back to the TV, and suddenly it went quiet, and I whipped around, and it was my film. Oh. So it had the effect that I w I, I don't. <laughs> It had the effect that I wanted to catch your attention by a, a lower key. Who was your favorite character? Kermit. Why? Well, it isn't easy being green. I think that's very appealing. He's so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. How yeah. did that character evolve? That was Jim Henson. Mm -hmm. You know, who can say how these ideas can come? But you could feel when you were around Jim Henson and Frank Oz, you could feel this channel of genius, I don't know how else to say it, that it was just an energy that came through them. Mm -hmm. Even at the time, we were a very small team and I was close friends with Frank and Jim and going out, say socially to a party or something, they didn't have any puppets, they didn't have any uh, mm -hmm. recognizable puppets with them, but one time Frank put on a little sock and, and went like this and the kids just went berserk just because of yeah. the energy that they conveyed. How do, is that the beginning of a character? You might put a sock no, on or well, something. I've been to a lot of Muppet tapings and you can, you can just feel that. And there's a quote in the 40th anniversary book on Sesame Street where Frank said, you know, when I finish taping, I really have no idea what happened. It's just that, yeah, because they just, it's so, such a pure energy that comes through and they, uh, it's, it's not something I can explain. They just sort of meld into that character. Yes. And become interesting. How M Miss Piggy came to be was there was a whole team of Muppets dancing around and suddenly Frank flew across the whole batch and went, hiya, and it was a karate chop. And that moment was the birth of Miss Piggy. <laughs> Forgot her karate chops. <laughs> and then came 25 pages of a um, character description. Really? Yeah, well, yes, they were. That's all. how in depth the character yes. histories and descriptions? Yes. Are? Wow. So yeah. they all had backstories. Oh, yes. Like any character you might exactly. Know. What do you remember most from those early days? What really stands out? The fun of it, the laughter, the joy. I also remember just being granted permission to, to do anything. When I first came, I was information assistant. That is, I told everybody, reporters, people writing books about the show and took them around the studio and everything. And then. One day John Stone came to me, he's the producer, really the creative heart of the show, and he said, I don't like the film part of the show, and I want you to go find really jazzy, lots of special effects, really some great film, and I want it for free, and we'll give them credit. <laughs> so I went and researched, and I did find some footage, outtakes from Disney that were donated, mm. outtakes from Pepsi commercials, different things. And I went over to the film room with this can of film and uh, Dorothy Todd and Margaret Murphy were there. Um, and they said, well, we don't have time, you do it. So they sat me- Edit that all together. Um, yeah, uh -huh. so they sat me down at the steam back with a 16 millimeter film and the splicing tape and Joe Raposo next door writing all the music. And that's how I started making films. It just took. Mm -hmm. A lot of people at Sesame Street have that experience. With John, another woman, Lisa Simon was a stagehand. And John Stone said to her, there was another bit for that day. And he said, well, I'm leaving, you do it. 
And she did, and she became one of the directors, one of the regular directors on the show. So everybody was lifted up. Hmm. It sounds like such a heady, creative environment. Yes, yes. Because we had the rule book, we had the curriculum, we knew our uh, bit mandate. I just think mm -hmm. that's so important for creativity, that you know you have a straight uh, focus about what you're doing, and then you do it, mm -hmm. but you you take a lot of creative energy to it. Mm -hmm. So what was the production schedule like? Did you film an entire show in a week? or No, no. Each script had anywhere from 5 to 12 minutes of new material on the street. And there was a season, like any television show, and we filmed, so November 10th, 1969, the first show went on the air, and then May was the end of that season. So during production, we filmed the new street material, and then separately, when the studio was on break from that production, three or four months in late summer, the Muppets were filmed. So all the Muppet bits were filmed for that year. Mm -hmm. And then the show was put together from a library of thousands of films and bits. Mm, okay. Including my films and mm -hmm. other films that came in from outside producers and the Muppet bits and the street bits. And they were all drawn around the letter, the number, and the right. goal for the day. Yes, I still remember the Capital I song very fondly. Yeah. <laughs> Why television? The idea that young inner city kids from three to five were not getting the help that they needed. There was a program called Head Start at the time, um, but Joan wanted to expand on that and really give those young children a chance to be ready for preschool that they, they hadn't had before. Mm -hmm. And television was the broadest way to reach them. Hmm. That's where the, meeting the kids where they're at. Yes. Yeah. Thinking about what you started with and what you see today, did you think you'd ever have this kind of result? Never. No one was ever saying, oh, this is going to make history. Oh, this is visionary. Oh, this is going to be, no, just the opposite. They were um, just not even thinking beyond just this moment and what we were doing. It's just that it's very hard to put in, into words the um, sort of overall feeling that I, I sensed at the time. Mm -hmm. The thing is, something was happening. Did you have a feeling when you were doing this that this was something special? Yes. There was a grace about it. There was the combining of the creativity and the joy. Mm -hmm. It's just they didn't really think that it was going to be mm -hmm. so huge. It wasn't part of the goal. It was The goal was to reach the young children that were more disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. You see the big picture. Why do you think the series has lasted so long? Being able to design something that they knew was going to appeal to children because of the research. And just because of the forces that came together at that time, the people that came together at that time. Mm -hmm. You can tell that there's a lot of love and joy involved in the creation of this and in the show itself. That is so true. We had a live feed in, in my film room from the studio. every So we could hear everything went on all day long at mm -hmm. the studio. And let me tell you that it was far more hilarious off camera because, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, everybody was just having fun most, most of the time. You know, it became so successful, people probably, like you were pinching yourselves like, I can't believe I get paid to do this and it's so successful. <laughs> Well, that's what I, th I thought at the time. Mm -hmm. It was just like being in some other magic kingdom or some other world. I, d I did have to leave Sesame Street because they cut the film department. That was the first budget cut towards 1975, and then I had to get a regular job. And it was, <laughs> it, it, it was very different. 
Do you think that one reason it's lasted so long is that it comes through this sort of the joy that went into creating it? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think that is the main, again, the, those particular talents that came together at that time um, we created this sum, the sum of the part, wait, the parts, the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. Right. We had also a mandate of diversity. We had a very diverse staff. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the characters were, were diverse and everybody loved each other and got along. I um, remember that too. Yeah, it was quite groundbreaking. Yes. At time. Yeah, it was. What did that teach you? Well, just more compassion and more understanding of people different from yourself. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had family living in Atlanta, and I went back and I saw a very different world than what we were trying to create on Sesame Street. So in terms of, again, different races, different people, you know, everybody is the same underneath. This was the first time, I was young at the time, but this was the first time that I ex had experienced that type of environment. And yeah, I will, I will never forget it. Well, Anne Burgund, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much oh, for thank talking you. with us. It's been great to walk back down memory lane or walk back <laughs> down memory Sesame Street with you. Thank you very much.